shot. They're going to hover the Rengar. Oh, man. They are trying there it is. to... Uh, to trash talk a little bit, but there's that Azir locked in as well as the Lucian for IG. Huge. So still wanting to keep up with the aggressive 2v2s, knowing they're going to have the damage from Azir later on to be able to lean into. <laughs> but Weibo still feel fine going towards the Zeri. Lighted a great time on that and going to instantly go towards the Lulu to counteract uh, either side of the pairing that IG end up going towards, either the Melio or the Nami. Glad to see the uh, Nami come through for this bot lane. Again, I feel like the most consistent or the strongest piece for IG. It would be a shame not to see them go out in a blaze of glory, and I'd love to see them get a little bit more of those resources given their way. The Tristana ban in the second phase is a signal towards Xiaohu. We'll see what those solo lanes are going to have to offer here. Yeah, Talia, uh, I think being another big one that comes to mind when you think of Xiaohu. Of course, the Tristana ban makes the most sense considering that they are going to have an AP jungler in the Maokai, but I'm also curious to see how top rounds out because there's a lot more justification, I think, for those more generic frontline top laners to make a stand when you have hyper carries on both sides of the rip so far, right? Zeri for Weibo and the Azir for IG, but no, it seems like they're just they're just all inning on taking away some of these mid lane picks. Jace has been something that Shao has been playing in solo queue quite a bit. I also just really like it with the Maokai. It gives so much damage potential when you're approaching objectives. And with this composition, it feels like IG are going to want to be at those objectives. Uh, we do see that Cassante slinking in there as the final ban from Weibo. So that will not be available. It's the instant lock rel for Tianjin. And it's something, again, we highlighted at the beginning of the series was yep. a staple for him when he was in the league earlier in the year. Again, we theorized this is why they brought him back in of like, hey, you're going to put Krine on his ear. You're going to want Tianjin on one of these more supportive champions to just play for fights. So wait, IG really leaning back to what they were doing in those first few weeks. And now for Weibo, I didn't think there was a possibility that we would see this champion end up coming through. Uh -huh. But it actually does come out for Shao. I, uh, Weibo haven't played this in a while. But again, I really feel like it leans into the strengths of how Weibo like to play quite well. And Xiaohu is one of the most lethal LeBlancs I have ever seen. When LeBlanc was super huge, when the AD meta was coming around for her, he was trashing side lanes, literally like single-handedly winning games because of his side lane pressure on this pick. They do lock in the rumble here to go with the combination. So I like a little bit of the idea of the team fight for Weibo, but that LeBlanc a bit different. Yeah, especially... Well I'm going to have to assume that they're, they're probably actually going to still run the AD LeBlanc, even though it's something that, you know, fell out of favor. And even when we do sporadically see LeBlancs, usually it is AP. But if so, they would have a lot of AP on the map. Still not not a really tanky composition coming out from IG with the Irelia being True. answered for YSKM. YSKM, this is another one of his staples. And it feels like a lot's going to be up to uh, that top, the top lane matchup and the bot lane matchup, right? The aggression that IG are going to be looking for in both of those lanes. You expect Xiaohao to cover for ZDZ in the top lane 2v2s. What uh, might be what decide the game? It's been such an interesting uh, recency of YSKM, right? It came into such a big splash, I feel like, last year. A mainstay of the reason why IG was winning, but... He's seen some fluctuations. He's seen some benching time. Here he is for the playoffs, and here he is with his Aurelia. A lot of pressure going his way, and a lot of pressure for IG in his series again, that if they lose this best of five, they are done for spring split. Yeah, IG need to pick it up, need to be able to find a win, being able to lean on another style, on some other comfort picks that they were strong with. They're going to have more damage if they can hold out early, but we'll see if that's even the name of the game when you have something like I really in top said that you want to enable to be aggressive. And it's the path, I think, especially of Tianjin that I'm going to be very curious about. He has a lot of options, I feel like. We were talking about the supportive pick for the Azir itself, but it feels like that Azir might be the lowest on the totem pole here when you're looking at uh, early pathing around. Uh, we get into it. Game number two is nigh. IG need to bounce back. Weibo looking to go 2-0 up. And I like that IG are looking for this play bot. Go for the level one. All right. Not going to fall for it. Yeah, especially because going back to Tianjin and what options he has, it actually feels like he, he, he might not have that many. 
Uh, just for the fact of you're playing against Sari Lulu on the opposite side of bot lane, so maybe you're just fine with, with leaving your 2v2 to just try and win out on their own. And, right, we expected Rumble to take Ignite. ZDZ did bring it into the Rift. You know he's going to want to be aggressive. So Tianjin might have to play a lot for Irelia, especially with Irelia's trade patterns to win lane, right? You think of her Q, it's, it's, it's all in focus. You're, you're putting yourself in harm's way to be able to start stacking up that passive and, and really get those extended trades that you want. And do you feel like Weibo has to approach this game any differently than they did last game with the double marksman comp and a little bit of that difference with the LeBlanc in mid lane instead of, say, the Tristana? Yeah, because I think Tristana brings still brings like a lot to a 5v5 setting to where AD LeBlanc, like, sure, you, you, you do, you can weave in and out, you know, get all those charges off, but it feels like they're going to be a lot more dedicated to sides in this game with Shahu. If that comes to fruition here, we do have those same side starts from both jungles. A uh, lot of vision being played towards the top side of the map as well. If Tianjin does go up there, we're looking at the level two mark down in the bot side here. Looks like it might just go out of the way. And I, I think the curiosity becomes Weibo with a run here would be bouncing off the back of an incredible performance last year with new pieces to the roster right i think xiao hao obviously the big name of it and uh, i think you you've got to look at the growth that this guy's had even in some of the slip ups yeah i mean again i think uh, i feel like it's, it's it's weird to say growth because again i don't feel like xiao hao himself was ever a bad player this split it, it, it's about integrating him into the team and integrating him and zdz into the bot side uh with the bot side specifically right and it feels like that has definitely improved in the recent weeks so you know with more time hopefully this Weibo squad can gel more and more to make it work and who knows again this playoff run might be where they hit their stride winning against ig would be big they come in heavy favorites but the nice thing is the the this side of the bracket the next opponent is lng who also obviously were very inconsistent had some very rough games so i think for either of these teams if you went out here you can look at that next one as you know not not a BLG, not not a top <laughs> esports, not not an insurmountable odds uh, that you would have to go on like an anime esque run to be able to win. Yeah, and I, I think for IG, we talked a lot about you know it's the first time in over a thousand days that they made it to the playoffs, but I, I think that in and of itself is a boon and shows a lot of the kind of bright piece direction for IG as a whole. Because the, the slump was still there for IG coming into the playoffs, right? They lost the last five of their series before coming into this one, and one of those to Weibo. So we'll see if they can get some of that gumption back in their tank as the 2v2 going a little bit nutty down here. Is Chris getting engaged? Oh, they oh. lost vision! On's oh, going to have to flash. Winken is now in a lot of trouble here. He's going to get slowed down potentially. No. The last airy is just going to do a proc damage, and Weibo have advantage in bot side. They're winning in bot. They're they're winning in top because of course CDC is going to have threat, especially when Shao has been uh, leaning up against there. So, winning on both extremities of the map so far is big. But maybe Tianjin finds his angle. They got to stay. There's a big wave here. This is really rough. On's going to try to get a dash play. Tianjin has an angle. Chris doesn't have a lot of mana. They're going to get the double flash out. He can't hit the shattering strike. He's missing everything. And now Tianjin feeling a little bit less confident. Wink can't step up with them, and Chris gives them the thumbs down. Sad. <laughs> for IG, sad for the edge end, that they're not able to get one there with how far forward Crisp and Light were in the lane. But look at the mini-map. Xiao Hao is making his way over. If you want to bully my bot lane, I'll come down and we'll make it an even fight here. IG wasting a lot of time down there, but they will end up getting their back off. And it's also allowed for On and Wink to stay and be able to stay even in CS, right? Because had that not happened, they would have had the back. They would have really uh, fallen far behind. And they prevent that from happening. But look, we, we move back up to the top side where ZDZ for now is doing a great job of maintaining this pressure. And why is Kim not able to connect the stun? Uh, so, you know, some of the things early. Hey, we're, we're in game number two. Got to warm up a little. <laughs> you know, something along those lines. Uh, no, nah, but I, I think it's curious. The, the, the theme, I feel like, going into this year has been taking multi parts from different teams. We saw the likes of OMG kind of being split up in ways, Aki, uh, as well as Shanji. But here in, in the potential of AL's uh, top combo and Xiao Hao and ZDZ coming over to a team who has had some of the biggest names in the league and not only, you know, ZDZ coming in to replace one of the biggest names in the league.
Oh, I guess we don't care about ZDC right now because Shao out flashes oh, the bubble. Oh, man. Those flashes on his Maokai are just insane. First blood goes to Weibo. Weibo find the first kill. IG will answer with Grubs. They have the Rel who, of course, thrives at that objective. So a bit of a trade coming out, but one of the lanes that IG was, was hoping to bank on for success so far not going the way they wanted. And I know On and Wink are going to be kicking themselves. Uh, you saw coming into the game, too, a little bit of extra love being given to On. He's definitely got to be feeling it after that first game. But they needed to find success with this Lucian. Nami, they will have to find a way to carve themselves back into this one. Where Zeri is not a slouch when she gets a lead in the lane. No, no, right? You, you, you can absolutely... Uh, take over from a very early point once we see him get his static shiv and that's something Weibo I mean I do have to deal with right the the double charges coming through when you're facing an 80 LeBlanc in mid lane and, and Zeri is going to be getting the static shiv online quite early too we're going to see how much of a hindrance they can be especially when Shaohu starts being able to unlock himself from lane a little bubble connection there as Tianjin was getting the scuttle crab in the bot side of the map. He is looking for a bit of an invade play while Xiao Hao is looking for a play on a cry. And oh! oh, no, 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 Lyric. <laughs> He's just going to get the ulti out of him. He does survive <laughs> in the flashing out of there, but Xiao Hu has Cryon's number all series long so far. I'm convinced. I'm convinced he lives in his head rent free. Like, what could you do? This guy literally won you an MSI and an LPL title. <laughs> Not like, like this. There's no way. Hey, I love Kryon as a player. Kryon, you even go all the way back to like 2020 E-Star when uh, you yeah. know, he was the new, exciting, up-and-coming player, him and away in that mid-jungle. But you just can't overcome the mental gap against Xiaohu. He's going to have to overcome it here as the season will be over. And somehow RNG never gives up on playoffs. Two of their standing members here. Now finding greener pastures, feels like, with Weibo and Xiaohu and crying on IG. Now Tianzhen is bot side, looking to try to make up for some of that lost gold. Has the ulti. Ha of course, has Hex Flash as well. So that's the engage he's hoping to find on the light. Crisp also doesn't have Flash up just yet. Xiaohu's here. They're not going to pull the trigger. And they will back away. Xiaohu being around the vicinity stops the aggressive advance of IG. Edgy just not going to be able to find anything. And Xiaohao is still going to play aggressively because Xiaohu is actually slightly leaning down towards River and mid lane. Oh, Nature's Grasp comes out. trigger here. And now Xiaohao going to get the engage over. And they go straight for Wink. He's going to be bursted down by the lightning. And that fish ain't no longer. Good job on focusing the, the player who didn't have any sums up. So another kill goes over. They're maintaining pressure in mid. They're maintaining pressure in top. Uh, they've gotten a plate each in both of those lanes. So, so far, all three lanes going superb for Weibo. I think that feels really, really rough for Wink, who uh, honestly I feel like has been, out of the two, the better of them, but also probably one of the best performing members on IG. And he's just getting completely focused down here on the Nami, and it's going to lead to so many advantages for Weibo. And, I mean, hell, he's even pulling a ban, right? He's Nautilus bans every game. Uh, so far, but is going to be on the squishier pick. It is going to be a really nice engage from Xiaohao after waiting out T Engine looking for his own play and then backing off. And this is where it was supposed to be maybe the angle for IG in the series, right? It was supposed yeah. to be in the first 10, 15 minutes of the game where maybe they can find success. But we're really seeing Weibo step up. And again, it really does come to the, come to the back off uh, that IG really came in as underdogs. Again, they yeah, only they found one win against another playoff team, and it was an upset against BLG. Not even, you know, had it been a another one or two wins against some lower playoff teams, maybe there'd be a bit more hope there, but IG just trying to do anything they can to find any semblance of hope. Already 2K goal deficit. Yeah, a uh, little add-on to that, and probably the last thing we'll say, they didn't win a single game their last four series in the regular season. So things have not been in the brightest contention. That's why I say, you know, making it here, I think, is in and of itself a good award for IG, where they yeah. haven't had the most consistent season. This organization was able to make it back to prominence. Exactly, right? It definitely feels like enough is we're going to have a potential 1v1 with the engine now coming up to try and Yo, ZDZ wants this here. He's going to be in a lot of trouble. He's using the equalizer best Ooh. he can to heat up. He's got a lot of damage now. YSK going to back under turret, though, and ZDZ 
gets out. He's going to activate, though. Tianjin gets a nice little flash play. Now YSKM wants to step up, but ZDZ, he flashes. Oh, he gets wait. the harpoon, and he's no. going to burn him to a crisp. Now Tianjin's getting low. ZDZ, he's going for a double kill here. He's burning them up. It's crazy. What a play! Weibo no are stopping! Life flashes over the tidal wave, and Weibo, they have completely gapped Invictus Gaming! Weibo are styling on IG right now. What beautiful plays across the map, but ZDZ, a player who is so criticized. What an absolute hero in top lane. What a play, my god! What do you do? Like, the whole team's just gotta be sitting there like, what kind of chat do we have up here? CDZ in the 2v1 takes it clean. It is insane. Able to play around this, not get stunned up by the E once again. I love that he drops the equalizer here and just kind of weaves in and out, plays around it, and just knows he can win this 1v1, Mazel. But I don't know. I don't know how he pulled the rest this of this harpoon. off. This guy's crazy. God, he just pulls the play on YS Cam. Oh. YS Cam didn't hit a single duet there. Yeah, ZDZ coming into this playoffs looking hot. And again, I know for IG, their top side of the map has been the weak side, but still, like, what what a phenomenal performance from ZDZ in that 1v2. And then we get to look at the bot side again. More Chad play. No, we're we actually don't. taking a look at the picture in picture here. I think we're just going to watch both. As now it looks like IG were actually able to get something a little bit back yeah. there. But while this play was going on, the flash play from Light was clutch. They got kills, Bot Mazel. I saw more kills happen after this. Chris died. Chris died in the bottom left hand corner of my screen. And you know what? That's a good thing for IG. We love that for them. It's a little bit of something. Uh, when you're down 4,000 gold at 12 and a half minutes, you need all you can get here. Xiao Hao has just been able to be such a menace on this Maokai. Here comes oh. Light. Lightning crashes, and it's going to strike twice in Bot's side. Double kill goes over yet again. And it looked like Weibo weren't even. Uh, intentionally looking for that to start off with, right? Like, Xiao just trying to get some vision, light. It was even hesitant on walking forward from, from uh, pushing that wave, but IG give the opportunity over. Now 13 minutes Dude. in. Five and zero on Zeri in 13 minutes. What do you minutes. do? What is Kryon thinking here? He's literally just been in mid lane watching his team crumble around him. IG's bot lane, the standard for them, the thing that was so successful is getting picked apart like a rancid piece of meat. Hey, but you know what? That rancid piece of meat was was nice and fresh for a little bit, like right here. Uh, sadly, it, it didn't it didn't stay very fresh. Just like we see, I don't even think Weibo were intentionally going to start this play off by looking for any kills. They see that the window is there, and I mean, great ult from right here, right onto both of them, and just everyone here to be able to follow it forward. It feels like this sort of lead this early should be insurmountable for IG. It's gonna take some glaring mistakes from Weibo to be able to, to give this one back over. Yeah, they've got 40 CS in top lane. They got 40, 30, 40 CS in mid lane. They got 30, 40 CS in bot side. It is all Weibo all day long and IG just want a scrap of something. Nature's Grass comes across, the engine actually gets the dragon. Now they gotta be a little bit careful. Tidal wave coming across there. No, health bars are not gonna last on long here. Crying, trying to get engaged, but Tianzhen can't get onto light. And now he's got free pickings. Crying does use his shifting stance to get away, but maybe he's gonna be a little bit of trouble with Xiao Hao chasing him down. The chain does not connect from Xiao Hu. Yeah, if the chain connected, maybe. Like they could have tried to force a flash there at least from Crying. Uh, even then, it might have been a little bit risky with how low Xiao Hu is, but still, Weibo Gaming win another one. And, I mean, IG, a team who haven't really shown to be able to know how to play from behind. I mean, how many options do they even really have in this game? Sure, I guess at a point you can try and lean on something like in a really in a, si in a 1v1 against the Rumble and sides, but even then they can match Xiao Hu against them. You never really yeah. get the chance to fight with how mobile LeBlanc is. Like, it really feels like looking for paths forward for IG just with how compositions have ended up uh, once again. It's just hard, and it's going to be here where Tianjin trying to find an angle to fight, but oh, I don't really man. see an angle here. Dude, the wild growth from Chris there to deny the crash down was actually so good. There's so many little mechanical moments happening for Weibo here. Speaking of, Xiaohu able to dodge his way out of an engage from IG. An hour to point where things like the Leandris are now finished for ZDZ. That wasn't built up before. an Oblivion Orb too, so to be able to deny some of that sustain coming out from the Irelia, or even for the Nami, 
once we get to the team fight part of the game. Now it's the slow burn, Mazel, of what do Weibo want to do next? When do Weibo <laughs> want more blood for the blood god? What do Weibo want to do is the biggest question because they can choose anything they want. It's like a, a day at the shopping mall here where they just have a blank credit card ready to go. I mean... Apparently they want to visit the pet store and get a Rift Herald. Ooh, wait. I was going to say we have a little picture on the bottom right hand of our screen. Did they get the... Oh no, just oh. Wow. <laughs> All right, wow. Shao. Oh, oh, oh! Crisp! He's almost dead. You get the engage there. Light now able to gun them down with the nature's grasp, but Shao sets up his team yet again. Light is a lightning rod for Weibo. They take the turret, they take their lives, and they're gonna drive straight down towards the spot side of the map. <laughs> I love it. Just <laughs> scared. He wanted to get him. Up. Yeah, scared trying off with that Rift Tail. Now gonna go for the back. Look at the mini map though. ZDZ is pushing in topside, even stealing away Krug. So it's small movements like this, right? Denying even more neutral gold from your enemy to make sure that they can't yeah. find ways back into the game. They aren't gonna be able to punish him with this recall coming through. And I, I'll just say it right now again, throw some immense love Shao Hao's way. This guy has been on fire. I think after these first two games, there is no question mark that he is going to remain the starting jungler for this roster. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, he got subbed out one game, but we're going to see here in the replay Shao Hu going in. Really nice setup, like you said, from Shao Hao, and then Light just able to follow up and make sure that the kill comes through. And it looks like we might be setting up for another one. Han just has no hope. Half of his health bar gone down. Light, look at it, chase forward. Wink just can't do anything but try to land bubbles. And Weibo out on the map in full force. They have two items apiece for their mid and bot side. And now, I mean, right? No, no outer turrets. They can freely get vision in the enemy jungle, which we can see they've already done in the bottom quadrant. Even Xiaohao trying to uh, upkeep that now. And they're going to be potentially playing for picks. Shao Hu knows he's going to be able to get a lot done in that top lane. Now being on two items. So, might even pinch mid. Actually, Shao Hu <laughs> looking for a little bit of those shenanigans we were talking about. And he is at his prime when he can continuously get all this poke down. Now, Weibo looking at the side lane pressure here is immense they will be able to take this one down with a few minions as well but light is on a tear 6-0-4 on the zeri a lot of confident gameplay coming out of him and again we highlighted earlier right he he way back in the day was the carry for snake esports but most recently made his name known on lng and here he is on weibo with a uh, another year under his belt making something happen I also got to point out how Weibo just shifted around the map, right? Because we started with Shao Hu in top, everyone else admitted Rumble, Lone, and Bot. Then everyone shifted down one to take Bot turret, and then they reshift back to mid. Uh, it's really nice uh, kind of lane allocation from Weibo in these past few minutes, shifting back and forth to take everything. And that has been the strength, right? Not only yep. has their side lane pressure been a lot of the strength, a lot of play around that, they know how to dictate the map pressure, and a lot of that comes from a, a veteran of Shao Hu, who we've known has a lot of direction around the map when it comes to mid game. Yeah, and that's why Weibo actually have the second highest win rate in the LPL when they're behind at 15 minutes. And a lot of that, again, it's due to the cleverness and how they can play some map states in mid game, like re-evaluate their win conditions and actually start playing around them uh, correctly. So really getting a lot of that so far. And I mean, 9K go down, how can IG even hope to take this fight? They're going to bring everything they got. They have everyone down here. Why is Cam even walking his way? They're going to throw up the Sun Disc to get some pressure in mid lane. They're going to try to utilize that to move down and potentially take this outer turret. A little bit of standing gold left available for IG. They could get collapsed on easily by ZDZ and Co. Nature Fast comes across. They have four members right on top of each Ooh. other there, and the equalizer is going to come down on the three of them. Tianzhen going to have to find a way out. He does have Flash. The crash down coming out too. Ultra Shock Laser going to go wide, but Light wants it. He wants it. The Tidal Wave. The bubble does connect, or at least not connect there. But the tidal wave did and stopped him in his tracks. Now ZZ, he goes for the flash. The harpoon connects, and he's got a big old fish on that line, and it's Wink. Ooh, Shaohu, he's feeling spicy. That ice in the veins ain't going nowhere as Weibo strike two down, and it's the bot lane of IG. 
<laughs> Xiaohu just getting in there. Again with that one energized auto. That's where all the damage comes from. And guarantees the kill through. Weibo not going to overstay their welcome. Not going to look for the Sparin. Instead just going to get the reset. Spend the gold that they've used. And get back uh, out to set up the map. To start taking. These dra to take this dragon. To take this Baron. This is rough. It's There's been one kill for IG. Their bot lane is combined 1, 10, and 1. Weibo have completely put the works on the power point of IG, and there has not been an answer. Again, I think the prep has looked great coming in with, with uh, their priorities and drafts, what they've left over, how you know what they've taken away. Great job by ZDZ on the rumble in this one. And even just the individuals are actually performing. We're seeing a very proactive Xiaohu. We're seeing ZDZ. I think win a lane and like be dominant in a matchup where he should. Just a lot of things coming online for Weibo at the same time. And again, it's great to see how well that they cl they clearly even just understand their own strengths. Here we are with a 8,000 gold lead for Weibo. They did just claim their first dragon after denying IG's stacking there. And the objectives have not been the name of the game. And that's kind of what we set up for Weibo as a, as a whole coming into this one. It was the story of the tortoise and the hare, and they were definitely the tortoise. But when that tortoise comes alive at the end of the race, he wins it all the same. And I got to say, Mazel, we already talked about it. The winner of this series goes on to face LNG. You go just back to last split in summer. Summer playoffs, it was the bottom side of the bracket. Weibo got eliminated by LNG in a five-game series. So... Weibo going to get their chance to get revenge from last LPL playoffs if they can just follow this through. So far, it's it's looking like a sealed deal, but that's a rematch. I got to say, I'm curious to see. <laughs> see if Weibo can handle business with two more wins. Or is it two turtles together? You know what I mean? It, they are the two slowest teams by, by game time and champion kills in the league. Is, is that what we get? At, Which honestly, turtle wins? It sounds like the turtle races. Have you ever had like a turtle race or been to a turtle race at like a bar? Wait, those are those are actually a thing? That's a thing, yeah. There used to be this place nearby that would do turtle races every Friday. You just like pick a turtle and you have a lot of fun. Maybe that's what we'll get for that one. But this is no turtle race right now. The tortoise has come online. And IG are pressed under their tier two tower on the top side while Xiaohu takes an inhib in mid lane. And the rest of them starting to rotate over, try and cut off IG's path because they know they're going to have to go answer Xiaohu. Again, it's a lot of these like small movements that feels like Weibo uh, are doing just so well. Playing with this AD LeBlanc. But for now, it's going to be hard for them to find any more. Seems like they're just going to send Xiaohu down to bot knowing he has TP in case any shenanigans break out around the Baron. We'll give Kryon one thing. He's definitely caught back up in CS and uh, in items. He's not that far behind. At least third item getting clear, very close for Xiaohu. Kryon maybe a little close to that. Again, our first uh, Azir of the series as a whole. And he will still have a lot of strength in the setup, but it's been a, a game so far that everything's been happening around him. And it's led to a position where he's, he's not going to have a lot of strength to try to pick back up his team. Yeah, it's going to be hard, too. Is, oh, we actually have TPs coming out from Xiaohu. Wise game has Flash. Oh, no. He's trying to dodge out there, but Xiaohu just got the chain connection there. As they do get it, the tidal wave going to come across. Tianjin got a nice little double engage. Now Wise game going in, but his health bar can't hang. And CDZ is here to cook him up. Call him the chef. As they already take down one, YSK will fall just as well. Add a little bit of lightning to that as it's going to be a hot pot here. Crisp and light on the edge and on the verge of death. Crisp going to have to flash away. Yeah, ends up being a one for two. Uh, so IG finds something, but that was with light not really being there for the majority of that fight. And again, he's the huge one on the Zeri. Still the Weibo coming out ahead. And I mean, 16 to two says it all. He does indeed. On does get his second kill of the game, but this was all piloted by the master class of Xiaohu kicking it off. I gotta say, I would actually think, is it a bigger win for IG? They they have full on doubled their kills, right? That's <laughs> huge. That's huge just value. math right there. Result based like, analysis, baby. It's like wait, wait, but we're already at 14 kills. What is another two more for them? But a lot of damage coming out here, as we can see from the Lucian and Azir when they get a chance to pile down. But look. Light just finally joined the fight. So, uh, again, if we're coming on even footing, it's going to be rough for IG. But finding small moments yeah. like that where Weibo are looking for picks, that's where you can start finding some picks of your own. Wink's bubble was extremely clutch there as well to stop Light in his tracks. Now, Weibo, though, they're looking at a Baron. 
They consistently were able to pressure IG around this objective last game. They're looking to do so yet again. Tianzhen could go for the 50-50, but they don't have any vision around this pit whatsoever. Crying going to catch out Xiaohu. The Baron already about half health here. Nature's Grass coming Ooh. in. Look at Light deleting on, and here comes Xiaohu over the top rope. Oh my goodness, he's on the back line, and he is untouched. He's going to be able to burn down everyone with ZDZ's help here too. That was a triple there coming through. YSKM all alone, though, left to his own devices, and Tianzhen has to watch as his teammates fall. The Zeri just flashed past the front line. What? Like the game that Light was playing in that fight was ridiculous. This is gonna lead to Weibo being able to get a Baron and that should be able to turn them taking the base down. But Tianchen gonna hope to get in position to find a steal. Chris gonna be the one dissuading. He is in position to stop him actually and does turn Tianjin away. So Baron goes over to Weibo. Fight goes over to Weibo. They give yet another kill over to IG. So it'll be on their third, but a contested one at that. Xiaohu like, Kao kicking it off. Look at this guy. Literally runs, flashes the title wave. He is past the IG front line right now. <laughs> IG top jungle is behind this man. As uh, does end up going down in the end, but he took down both carries. He took down both carries from IG. So at this point, you know, ZDZ big enough to be able to finish the rest of this off. We're gonna see in the bottom hand of our screen, IG getting another dragon. So gonna be some nice uh, gold from that one, but still 10K down. I guess to be fair, Wave have been sitting at about a 10K gold lead for a while true, now. True. But with this Baron is where you really expect it to start opening up. Three and a half items now for Light and Xiaohu. And again, can't stop praising Light who this is the light that I want to see, right? The very aggressive flashing in your face. I feel like we lost a little bit of that aggression from him because he really wanted to hammer down some of the good team fight positioning that we've seen him really excel at in recent history. But it is the light that flashes on you, the light that goes into a 1v5 and comes out the better of it that I love to see. Yeah, and again, I mean, Zarya champion who builds crit, a lot of crit items getting small buffs just patched, so light definitely being someone who's benefiting from that. With, with you mentioning him always, someone who's looked very proficient on the Zeri. And now Weibo going to be able to use this Baron playing out through two lanes to just pull IG apart and try and make their life hell with this LeBlanc. It's not even a poke comp yet. They're able to use it as such. Crying had to be forced to back on. Going to pull the trigger on the culling there. Tanzan wanted to find an engage. That was such a good timing on the Glitter Lance from Chris. Now tied a wave across the back here. Redemption going to be used to heal back up. They didn't even need any healing from Weibo. And they're just utilizing this Baron buff as the cannon minion finally does fall to crime. And I, I get what Weibo are doing right now. They're having Shahu even wait around with them top because of how low they're getting trying to find a pick. But you need to be using this Baron as well. I think there's really no excuse for Weibo to not be setting up and then playing through two lanes when they have this block and they have Baron. It's Tianzhen. Second time's the charm. Double bubble. It's a little bit of trouble. Nice little combo from Cry, but he gets melted as he immediately gets taken down. YSKM now all alone. And they tried to pull the trigger. They do get one back for on. But Weibo, they are pressing their advantage here. Now Xiaohu, Xiaohu, he's on everyone here. The double kill is there for ZDZ. Give one to Light as well. And that might signal the end of game number two. ZDZ even throws up the IG fanfare. And Weibo actually finishing this game in a similar amount of time. It was 29 something in game one. And they are holding themselves to that standard result. My God, 25 to four. What an absolutely dominant showing from Weibo. And they're all business. Like, you are not seeing them overreact, get too excited, like anything from any of these moments in games so far. Yeah. So Weibo really just trying to make it through and get to that next round. They realize what starting in the first round means and the journey they have ahead of them. But this is a hell of a strong start for that. And unfortunately for IG, you know, it, again, it's it's struggling to even find your footing at all in this series. You haven't been able to find any of those early advantages. You've tried for a composition like that twice in a row, and that is what worked for IG in the regular season, but that's what makes a best of five and playoffs a different beast. We'll see if IG can bounce back or if Weibo go on to a 3-0 after a short break.